All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Huyu. I'm the group leader for the Emission Inventory and Analysis Group here in the Office of Air Quality Planning and Standards. And I will be giving a quick overview of the newly proposed Air Emissions Reporting Requirements Rule. The main objectives of our proposal is to ensure that we have enough information to identify and solve air quality and exposure problems to support and carry out the provisions of the Clean Air Act. And secondly, to ensure that communities have the data needed to understand significant environmental risks that may impact them as well. In case you are not familiar with the air emissions reporting rule, it's currently a regulation that requires states, locals, and some tribes or SLTs to report their annual air emissions data to EPA. Right now, under the current rule, reporting is due by December 31st for the previous year. The current regulation allows for voluntary reporting of hazardous air pollutants, or HAP, prescribed burning and wildfire data, and requires other pollutants, um, the criteria pollutants. And we're gonna have a, more about what's required now on a different slide. We're using this data that we collect as a, along with other resources to create the National Emissions Inventory, or NEI. The NEI is then in turn used by many of the programs and activities, both of EPA, such as modeling and emissions trends, as well as for many uh, public sources of information, uh, and also for re responding to questions from Congress, the press, and other sources. Under the current rule, we are requiring reporting of criteria pollutants and precursors. The list of those is uh, shown there for criteria pollutants on the first bullet, um, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, I'm sure you are familiar with these. And then of course the precursors are those that contribute to the formation of criteria pollutants, for example, VOC and NOx are precursors for ozone and ammonia is one a precursor for PM formation. Within the rules, certain sources of emissions are reported as point sources, which means that those sources, for each of those facilities, we require those emissions to be reported by the state uh, by emissions releases within the facility. We have more on the definition of what these sources are because we are proposing to change it on an upcoming slide. And states also report other sources of emissions, um, but that's not as relevant for small businesses. Under the proposal, there are nine major parts. For all reporters, we are proposing changes, additions, and clarifications for point source reporting, including new data collection about small generating units. And we have a clarification about what data under the rule are emissions data and therefore not subjects to confidential treatment. Under the proposal, uh, owners and operators have other requirements that we've proposed, which includes the reporting of HAP emissions for certain facilities within states. And within this requirement, there are provisions to reduce burdens on small en entities. We also have requirements for reporting facilities that are not in the geographic scope of states. That largely means for tribes and for um, offshore. And then there's other re proposed requirements for owners and operators to use electronic reporting to submit source tests. Now this other um, number six listed here, that is a provision that affects states. However, if states choose to report HAP on behalf of owners and operators, then obviously that would affect the owners and operators within the state choosing to report on their behalf. So just to recap the big picture here, under the current uh, AERR, owners and operators are reporting criteria, pollutant, and precursor emissions to states, locals, and tribes, who then report it to EPA. Under, uh, we have optional HAP reporting under the current collection, but under the proposed collection, we still have criteria pollutants being reported from owners and operators to states and then to EPA. But the requirement, proposed requirement is for owners and operators to report half emissions directly to EPA. And states still have the optional ability to, that, to do that reporting. And in addition, the proposal includes reporting source test data electronically to EPA directly from owners and operators. There's a lot of changes proposed in this rule. This slide summarizes uh, the bulk of the key ones. We're changing the definition of point sources to include, uh, in addition to the criteria pollutant thresholds we have now, to include 
all major sources and certain non-major sources under certain industry codes that have emissions above proposed HAP thresholds. Under the proposal, major sources would have to report all HAP and non-majors would have to report just the pollutants that are above the thresholds. Under the proposal, we are um, requiring, proposing to require point sources being reported every year as opposed to every third year. And we have a phase in uh, of earlier point source for dates, both um, for states and um, earlier dates for direct reporting from industry, earlier uh, a phase in that starts with first with new dates for HAP and then with earlier dates as time moves on. There's a number of other provisions, many of those, um, and you see these listed here under the line, while they still could apply for small businesses, uh, because of some of the things we've put into the proposal, uh, they are less likely to be relevant for small businesses. Um, but I'm not gonna go into this here just for lack of time. If you are communicating with small businesses, here are the key points to keep in mind about the proposal. First, the non-major source half thresholds are based on a risk analysis that we did. The appendix has a slide with more information and of course the preamble goes into extensive detail. So the important takeaway from this is if a small business would be affected by a proposal, it's because of the potential risk contribution to people based on the latest science from the emissions coming from those businesses. Our estimate is this would affect about 35,000 small businesses based on the Clean Air Act definition of small businesses. We also have um, an option included so that small businesses could report emissions as a facility total instead of for each emission unit and release point, which is a burden reduction. And we have proposed that EPA would develop and provide a tool for small businesses to use to help them estimate facility-wide emissions. And then the last takeaway uh, for small business related com considerations under the proposal is that EPA is considering two different definitions of small businesses and seeking comment. We have a number of rollout webinars planned. Um, we have the first for industry of all sizes uh, this Thursday, the 17th. We have a uh, rulemaking for um, changes that's focused for small businesses, as small businesses and tribal nations on the 24th, uh, and then for communities on the 29th. And those are all public. And then we have our public hearing on the 30th. Uh, just so you know, we do have a variety of Q and A's. We're working to get more of these on the web. Uh, the, the short version of this slide is that these emissions rep reporting requirements do not trigger permitting requirements by states, that we will provide training to industries reporting directly to EPA, including small businesses, and that we will in engage with the community, including industry, to get input on the tool to estimate emissions but we don't have details on that, that would come after um, if this provision were finalized into the final rule. We have published in the Federal Register, the citation is shown in that first link. We have a website that has more information, including registrations for those webinars I mentioned a couple slides back. Of course, the docket is now open at regulations.gov. And uh, we also have a way that people can just submit clarifying questions to nei underscore help at epa.gov. And please include AERR in the subject line and we will get back to you as soon as we can. And that was about 10 minutes as promised. Um, I think we have four or five minutes for questions. I'll go ahead and uh, ask, uh, this is from Jeremy. He'd like to know if you could elaborate on what the two definitions for small businesses might be. Yes. We have a small business definition uh, in the Clean Air Act. Um, that's roughly 100 employees and it not, must be a non-major non source, um, as you can see from the second sub bullet. The other definition is to rely on the Small Business Administration size standards, which vary depending on the NAICS um, of different sizes. Uh, and it either is based on, depending on the NAICS, the number of employees or the um, receipts. Um, but just as an example, some NAICS uh, are considered small businesses uh, with um, a number of employees up to 1,500. So compared to 100 employees, that's quite a difference. 
Thanks, Mark. Oh, here's Other another questions. question. Have you identified which industries are likely to be affected for small businesses? Yes, in the preamble, um, we talk about an analysis that was done to try to estimate the number of uh, entities by makes, and that information is included in the docket um, with the analysis that we did to estimate the number of small businesses affected. So that information is available by makes, at least our estimated approach. Thanks, Mark. I think that's it for questions. Okay.